Matt Carroll with the FATV Sports Report. We got a lot of interesting things happening this weekend. A lot of high school teams in action tonight and nationally we have the playoffs starting up. All this and lots more. Join me and Matt Carroll on this week's Our City News. search for victims of a massive landslide in California. Fitchburg residents express concern and support for a new city hall. And Fitchburg students head back to school after a week of cold weather troubles across the region. All this and more coming up next on Our City News. And now, the latest news, sports, and weather with Stephanie Ellison and the entire Our City News team. Massive mudslides triggered by the loss of vegetation after a devastating season of wildfires in California has claimed lives, leaving widespread areas buried under several feet of mud. Rescue teams continued combing the ruins of Montecito on Thursday amid dwindling hope of finding more survivors from the debris and mud flows that engulfed the California town earlier this week. The teams had scoured about three quarters of the debris field left by the avalanche of mud which killed 17 people, destroying more than 100 homes and damaged 400 more. Hundreds of Montecito residents, who were marooned but not injured by the devastation, were led to safety on Wednesday by rescue teams using dogs, helicopters and specialized vehicles. The death toll was expected to rise from the first day of the rainy season in the area, already charred by widespread wildfire. Fitchburg and other area schools are recovering from Arctic temps that left many cities and towns without services across the region. Crocker School students were moved to local schools as the school leaders scrambled to get all the city students back into the classroom. Our City News talked to Fitchburg Superintendent Andre Ravenel about how they are getting back on track. We were very, very fortunate. Uh, it was amazing to me that when I was in need of two locations to put 650 students that when we made our list of all of the different possibilities there were two things in that possibility that were actual schools uh, we had already started working with St. Anthony's Parish because we were looking at it as a site because my enrollment is growing at the elementary school level so we already had a good working relationship with them and then as a fellow superintendent calling Loxie Calms in Lunenburg and saying hello I'm in need of a school and I hear you have space the answer was what do you need and how do we get it done so uh, it was great working with those two different groups uh, we've moved our students into actual schools uh, and we've been able to uh, keep education going for our students we've done it in less than a week and lost only two days this was one time when I saw a snowstorm coming on Thursday that I was actually relieved because I knew it would give us a little bit more time to do the kind of preparation and work we needed to do to get the buses rolling on Monday to the two new Crocker campuses. Certainly we all believe in emergency plans and we've all experienced a power outage. This goes well above that and uh, to have a plan and to be able to execute it quickly uh, speaks well to the expertise of the, uh, of the administration in your office. Uh, it does. You have to have a lot of planning but you can't plan by yourself and I think one of the things that was really evident to me in this is that those those relationships that you build over time make it possible so that when you do need something and you pick up the phone and call people they're there and they answer and say what do you need uh, as I've said many times we had Lemonster Public Schools uh, Gardner Public Schools Monty Tech uh, Applewile, all of these schools have donated furniture, loaned us furniture so that we get things up and running. I've received more calls today from other superintendents saying, what do you need? So it's really that kind of collaboration uh, to know that as you're planning something this massive to relocate all of these kids, I can't do that alone. Uh, I really need to rely on, first of all, the expertise of my team, and they're incredible. 
uh, the fact that teachers are going to be ready. So when I get them a new building, they're ready to move right in and start teaching. And yesterday, as I went to both sites, it was amazing to see that within an hour, classes and education was going on at both of the sites for Crocker. Unexpected and prolonged delays with academics for any age range, any grade range, uh, presents special problems, and uh, you've risen to that challenge. Uh, a little bit about the uh, how a delay can affect uh, a child's learning. So in two ways. One is, as you know, if whatever days we don't do now, we have to make them up at the end of the year. And um, you only have until July 1, because you can't be in session after July 1. But the real issue is that this is prime education time right now. This is the time. This is the time when students are being prepped for MCAS. This is the time when you're in the midst of the, the real meat of the content in all of the grades. So every day you miss now, it's really never going to be made up. And that's something that's missing uh, for that student as they move forward. And as we all know, at the end of the year, you're trying to add those days. You're dealing with heat. You're dealing with all of the energy that comes with, you know, school vacation being a couple weeks away. So what's great about this is that we didn't lose too many days of that prime education time. As repairs to schools continue, we got a chance to talk to the principal of Crocker School as the students settle into their temporary classrooms over in Lunenburg. Adam Render is the principal at Crocker School, and of course this is now Crocker at Pasios, uh, sort of a get up and go type thing with the elementary school, and it's working out well over in here in Lunenburg. Yeah, it's, been, it's been smooth and calm. We had um, you know, less than a week to get two schools up and running, and uh, we're lucky we have 15 classrooms over here. The teachers have worked incredibly hard moving everything in and being prepared. Uh, drop off and pick up went pretty smooth yesterday and kids are, are learning already. Yeah. We walked in this morning, it's uh, just like it has always run this way. Yeah, it's really like we opened the year here this year. Um, our, the community has been unreal. Central administration has um, worked nonstop to make sure we have everything we need to get going. At the Crocker School by Thomas Pashos, the elementary school here in Lunenburg, Glenn Foster, our City News. A crash on Lunenburg Street here in the city sent one man to the hospital as officials worked to get the midday traffic flowing again in the area. Glenn Fossa was on the scene and has the report. Fitchburg Police, Fitchburg Fire, and of course Unitil. Uh, utility officials working very carefully at this winter wedge scene where a panel truck has now wedged itself between a utility pole and Oriental Ispahan rug right here on Lunenburg Street in the city. Obviously, uh, recovery crews from Aldrich Towing working very carefully now, uh, trying to dislodge this cube van that has made its way between the building and the utility pole at the corner of this intersection of uh, Wilmot Street at Lunenburg. This call coming into Fitchburg Fire Department and police obviously responding to this crash this morning. Deputy, just tell us a little bit about the detail of this crash. Well, it's just, it uh, seems like the gentleman that was driving his vehicle was uh, either had some kind of a seizure or went unconscious or something. He doesn't remember what happened in, in the accident. Uh, he kind of fit himself right between the pole and the building. Um, when we got here, he was disoriented, conscious but disoriented. Uh, and we were able to winch the truck back a little bit to open a side door to get him out uh, instead of waiting for a wrecker. We did that with our towel ladder, so it was a pretty good operation. Our guys did a good job, and uh, he's safe and in an ambulance right now. So there was an extrication, uh, minimal uh, injuries, but he's going to go get checked out. Yep, yep, he's going to be transported to Lemonster Hospital for his injuries. He had some facial scratches but uh, and the disorientation, and that was basically it. The outcomes of this single car crash could have been much worse. Obviously, all officials taking a deep, deep role in this, including the recovery effort that's underway right now. Glenn Foster, our City News. One man's car goes up in flames on a busy city street, causing rush hour delays, keeping firefighters busy as they extinguished the blaze. The driver pulled into a parking lot of a local business after he noticed flames coming from under his hood. Our City News cameras were on the scene with the report. And the operator of this late model Mazda sedan did not want to be 
uh, commenting on camera. However, told us just left the house when he pulled into Ron Bouchard's lot right here on Lunenburg Street, Route 13, and uh, the engine caught fire. Fitchburg Fire Department responding, and of course, uh, recovery efforts now underway by Aldo Trotto body for this uh, Mazda sedan. Although this was quite a spectacle for our afternoon commuters right here around 5.30 coming inbound to the city of Fitchburg reminds us of how quick they were right here to respond with fire extinguishers, no one getting hurt. Reminding us to be very careful in an instance like this. Glenn Foster, Our City News. Fitchburg residents had a chance to express their opinions about the remodeling of City Hall. Bringing business and activity back to the 781 Main Street building was the top priority during the City Council meeting at Memorial School Thursday evening. I would ask that you find it to stand up, to speak to each other, to challenge each other and stand up for our kids, to stand up for the future of our community and vote against City Hall. Thank you. My name is Deborah Jeffries. I've been a resident of Fitchburg for almost 55 years. I pay taxes, I'm not wealthy, and I want to renovate at the City Hall. I'm a teacher in the Fitchburg Public Schools, and I've been a teacher for 31 years in Fitchburg, all of which have been at Crocker Elementary. And I have to thank you all for the support you have given and continue to give to us. At Memorial School, probably the most challenging of all political challenges for the Dean Natale administration in this city council in the year 2018. With me, Corinne Hartenstein, a proponent in a way of growth, but not so much maybe for the city hall right now. Yes. Um, so I grew up in Framingham, and we did see a lot of economic growth in Framingham. Um, and that was actually through eateries and breweries coming to town, specifically Jack's Abbey. And I would love to see Fitchburg grow economically as a fairly new resident, but I don't think a new city hall is right at this point when we owe so much to our schools. Yeah. This and more and all about the cat's meow on this version of Our City News. Lara O'Kane is a south side resident of the city of Fitchburg and a proponent of the new city hall. Laura, you believe that the development will attract others and be good for the city? I do. I think it will spur economic development. I think it's important for the city to have a central meeting place, a central place for business. It's an investment that the city really needs to make. Some folks in the forum have talked about setting an example, and in that case, the city would benefit. Of course. It would definitely benefit. Main Street, I think, would see a revitalization that is long overdue. And I really think this administration is doing its best to move city, the city of Fitchburg forward. As the forum continues tonight, more from our city news. And Stephanie, a great example of how engaged the public is on this particular issue. Two more readings of this legislative bill before the city council and the mayor. We have yet to see what's going to happen. There is a time and a place for planning. But let's finish what we started first. Do we want to sit around and plan, or do we want to take advantage of a new, unique opportunity to match the plans we've made with the commitment our city deserves? So suffice it to say, ladies and gentlemen, we've, we've made those plans. To quote Peter Drucker, the founder of Modern Management, unless commitment is made, there are only promises and hopes, not plans. With warmer temps and rain in the forecast, state and local officials are raising the red flag about the dangers of being out on icy ponds and streams in the area. We got a chance to talk to the Fitchburg Fire Department about how to stay safe and how they're prepared in case your loved one gets in trouble on the ice. As the temperature rises, causes special concerns for our public safety personnel, particularly here at the Fitchburg Fire Department, with Rescue 2 right behind me here, and Private Chris Klein. Great to see you today, Chris. Thank you for being part of our city news. We've got some special equipment. We've spoken with the chief. Uh, there are certain things that will happen now as temperatures come up uh, with those uh, lake streams that might be frozen where people think it's actually safe to walk or skate or have other recreational activities. Correct. Um, 
as the temperature starts rising, the ice on the lakes and rivers are going to start to melt. So the safe ice that's going to be on these bodies of water are going to start to be reduced and we have a higher chance of people falling in. Yeah. And in that unfortunate circumstance where you may be called to uh, lend a hand or to do a rescue effort, we've got some special equipment that you're going to show us. Yes. Uh, some of the things that we use, um, starting with our throw bags, because the mentality that we use if someone falls in is a reach, throw, go situation, because the last thing we want to do is actually go out there and in put ourselves in more danger than uh, we have to. So the first thing we try to do is reach for them. We can reach for them with a pike pole or something like that to be able to pull them out of the hole that they fell in to be able to get them to shore. That's the safest route. Uh, the next one is being able to utilize a throw bag and uh, it's got about 75 feet of rope and utilizing it we take it and we throw it out to them that they can grab onto and then we can pull them out of that hole uh, and onto shore. So another thing that we utilize uh, to protect ourselves is cold water rescue suits. Um, they have neoprene on it like they have in wetsuits for divers and stuff like that but it also has this um, waterproof outer shell to be able to prevent uh, water from getting in uh, so we'd be able to utilize this to be able to go out uh, to get some if they had fallen through. One of the other things that we utilize is this ice water rescue sled. To be, uh, it's got two pontoons on either side for uh, the float. We'll hold on to this to walk out so if all of a sudden the ice gives away below us we can stand on this and to be able to get through. We can paddle out if it's open water. It has an ice pick on it to be able to get us up onto ice shelves uh, from the open water onto the ice. It has a strap on it that we can come up to someone and be able to pull them onto it and pull, them on, uh, pull their body on because they're going to be very tired by the time we get there. So we can pull them up on here and be able to pull them back through. And on the back side, we attach a rope to it which the guy's on shore, uh, once the person's on here, we'll turn around, signal them, and they'll actually pull from shore, uh, pull both of us back onto shore. So Chris, in every one of these instances, of course, we're talking about prevention first. You've got a great bunch of equipment and super training, but you don't want to use it because that means something bad has really already happened. Correct. Uh, one of the things that we think about is uh, why folks get into trouble, and one of the reasons they get into trouble is an emotional response. For instance, their dog or an animal or other uh, reason they may venture out onto a icy, a icy place where they should not be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if your pet or an animal falls through the water, don't go out after them. It's, we know there's a lot of emotion tied to pets and animals, uh, but we don't want you in without the proper equipment, uh, proper training to be able to go out to get them so best thing to do is call us we're gonna we'll come out and we'll get them out of that hole and be able to uh, get them the proper care that they're gonna need taking care prevention and of course the ultimate uh, answer 911 if we're in trouble Fitchburg Fire Department thank you so much for being on our city news and of course the best thing to do is stay off the ice during the warmer weather and now let's go over to Matt Carroll with the sports report Hi, this is Matt Carroll. Today is January 12, 2018, and this is the FATV Sports Report. We'll start with local sports. Fitchburg High playing tonight against Groton Dunstable at 7 p.m. at home. The girls are on the road also at 7 p.m. playing Groton Dunstable. You have boys hockey playing Gardner tonight, 4.30. You have St. Bernard's uh, boys basketball winning last night 53-45 to against North Middlesex Regional. The girls will be playing North Middlesex Regional tonight 6.30. You also have St. B's hockey. Their next game will be against Acibit tonight at 6.30 at home. Money Tech boys basketball will also be playing tonight. They play at 7 p.m. at Blackstone Valley Tech. The girls will be home against Blackstone Valley Tech also at 7 p.m. We now move to Lemonster basketball boys. They play Notre Dame tonight at 7 p.m. And the girls will be on the road against Millbury at 7 p.m. We now go to hockey. The boys back in action this upcoming weekend against Auburn Saturday at 6 p.m. We now go to Fitchburg State Sports. Men's lose a tough one versus Salem State, 80 to 63. Their next game won't be against MCLA until uh, until Wednesday the 17th at 7:30. The girls will also play MCLA at 5:30 the 17th. We now go to hockey. Uh, men's taking a tough loss last night versus conference rival Plymouth State, 5 to 3. 
Now we're going on to pro sports. Celtics 76ers played in London uh, yesterday at 3 o'clock. D- despite being down by 22, Kyrie and the Celtics are able to uh, win this game 114 to 103. So an exciting game there. The Bruins will take on Montreal this upcoming weekend. On Saturday, speaking of this weekend, we have the playoffs to the NFL. You have the Patriots and the Tennessee Titans playing. The way this game goes, we'll see how the Patriots play with all the rumors going around with coaches and everything like that. Tennessee with the big comeback win over KC, momentum kind of going their way. I think the Patriots do find a way to win this game with their rushing attack. They run the ball a lot more than they have this season. They're able to find the victory and move on to the AFC Championship. We also have Jacksonville and Pitt playing on the AFC side. Jacksonville's defense versus a high-powered offense of the Steelers, Bell, Roethlisberger being in the backfield. I do think Jacksonville's defense is so over powering though that Jacksonville does take this game and moves on to the AFC Championship game. Falcons and the Eagles. Eagles without starting quarterback wins. The key for them is the defense holds up, gets to Matt Ryan, forces uh, some turnovers. I think they do do this and I think they move on to the NFC Championship game. You have the Saints and Vikings also playing in the NFC. Uh, The key is the Saints were able to open up that passing game like a lot of people said. Relying on the rush all season, it was kind of a sleeper, especially the betting quarterback Drew Brees. They were able to open up that pass attack they looked really good the defense has been surprisingly good all season long I think they beat the Vikings and they move on to the NFC Championship just a reminder on times Falcons and the Eagles play the first game on day one at 435 game two Patriots and the Titans play at 815 um, and then the next day Jacksonville and Pitt playing at 105 and the Saints and the Vikings playing at 440 wrapping up the divisional playoffs again this is Matt Carroll and that's the FATV sports report Thanks, Matt. We'll be right back with more from Our City News right after this. Fitchburg continues to see an upswing in manufacturing as more companies move in, creating additional jobs right here in the city. This combined with longtime employers is bringing new life to what was once an industrial center of the region. Our City News has been out talking with some of these companies, and we start this week with a new series called Made in Fitchburg. Emma is the CEO and president of Micron Products, an industry known in Fitchburg and has been here for a long time. Sal, great to see you today, and thanks for being with us on Our City News. Really unique products, and uh, first of all, thank you for keeping the company right in Fitchburg in good times and in bad, and uh, now Fitchburg seems to be on the move, and Micron is positioned well. Right. Um, well, thanks for coming to visit. Uh, Micron is, a, is kind of a unique place. Um, we have a variety of different uh, things going on at Micron. We are a uh, contract manufacturer. Um, Really, literally, there's nothing we can't make. Um, And it's evidenced in some of the products that you'll see as we walk through the the shop. Um, We started out in uh, as a manufacturer of uh, sensors for ECG electrodes. So if you've had a stress test or you've been in the hospital, Um, These little tear-off tabs are something that every hospital in the world uses. Uh, Micron manufactures about half of the sensors for ECG electrodes in the world. About half of um, what is made in the world is made in Fitchburg. 
Um, so, but uh, it's a, a small and defined market, and we've had to expand um, by moving into other areas um, that uh, that uh, can offer more growth and more employment opportunities for our people. And of course, it goes beyond that. As you said, you can almost make anything. So just give us a real quick tour of the product line here, and then we're going to see some actual manufacturing. Sure. Um, so uh, we are primarily a plastic injection molder and a machine shop. So it's typically hard to find those two skills under one roof. Um, what we can do in plastic, uh, for instance, is we're making, uh, we make the tough stuff. Um, so. This is a, uh, for instance, this is a diopter ring that goes on a forward-looking infrared scope that goes on a weapon site for Raytheon. Um, it's, uh, you're not going to find buckets and pails and jack-o'-lantern flashlights or anything like that in plastic at Micron. Um, but we ta have the highly engineered resins, highly engineered products. Um, on the machining side, we are, are a medical uh, um, uh, machine shop. We do mostly... Uh, parts for orthopedic uh, implants and large joint implants like knees and hips. Um, we do some wrist fixation devices, some rib fixation devices, and one of the more recent um, product lines that we um, have is is a product that serves the uh, military and law enforcement. Uh, it's a uh, less lethal projectile. Um, it's shot out of a 40 millimeter grenade launcher, and it gives uh, law enforcement uh, another option in their tool belt um, to to um, get a uh, a, um, a perpetrator to cooperate, um, so without being uh, lethal. Uh, so there's a variety of things going on. Um, uh, we make automotive parts, medical parts, industrial parts. Um, we have a large amount of automation and highly skilled workers at Micron. We have a very dedicated staff of about 100 people. Uh, most of them are, are very local, um, and uh, and it's a it's a good story. It's a kind of our hidden gem in Pittsburgh. Yeah, for sure. There's no doubt, and of course, it's a wide range of product. Uh, just a few seconds of uh, detail of some of these pins and the joints, uh, Sal, as we speak sure. about them. Sure. Um, so, uh, in an, in a, a knee operation, uh, typically what happens is the doctor will replace um, some. Uh, parts of the knee that have been affected by osteoarthritis or other conditions. Uh, what Micron will do is machine, now this is a femur replacement, uh, we will machine this product and the doctor will make a cut in the bone and replace that piece of the bone with this cobalt chrome uh, surface replacement. Uh, so there are other components that go into that assembly. Um, this is the tibia side. Uh, of the knee replacement, so that is the articulating surface. Um, they come in all shapes and sizes, and it depends on the company. Um, uh, this is a partial replacement, so uh, for purposes of bone preservation, they will, will make a partial knee replacement. And uh, these are some of the cutting guides that are used in the operation. So um, these parts get reused. Uh, this is a hip implant. This is, happens to be a very small person. Um, it's a very small hip. Uh, but it's, uh, it is a, um, a, a component uh, made of titanium. They're all different shapes and sizes and flavors and, uh, of the material. As we move out onto the manufacturing floor, there's something really special about your lineage. Of course, primary and secondary education right here in our city, Fitchburg. Yeah, that's right. Um, I was born in Fitchburg, uh, went to school here, and I walked... Uh, uh, both ways in the snow, uh, in the hill, uh, up the hill, um, uh, both ways to Fitchburg High, um, uh, and I went to Fitchburg State University, uh, and um, I'm now I'm back as CEO in a, in a company in Fitchburg, and it's all very familiar territory for me. Employing over 100 people right here in our city of Fitchburg. Sal, Emma, thanks so much for being with us, and thank you to Micron for being made in Fitchburg. Thank you for visiting. It was a pleasure to have you guys come and visit. More to come on Our City News. Stay with us. This week on FATV. Tuesday at 7 p.m., Barbara and you with guests from Habitat for Humanity. Wednesday at 7 p.m., discussing Fitchburg Now, charities. Friday at 3 p.m., it's Bowling, King of the Palace. 
and on our government channel Tuesday, 7 p.m., it's the City Council Meeting Live. This episode of Our City News is brought to you by KCMC Management, our local Dunkin' Donuts. If you have a story you'd like us to share, check us out on our Facebook page or email us at rcitynewsfitchburg at gmail.com. For all of us here at FATV and Our City News, I'm Stephanie Allison, and stay frosty, Fitchburg.